True or false? Children with disabilities get confused and overwhelmed by learning and have difficulty learning one language. Therefore, additional languages will make acquisition more challenging. What do folks think? I see some hands going up. True. OK, I presume that means most people think this is false. So let's see what, what our answer is. Yes, it is false. There is no evidence that those with disabilities get confused or overwhelmed or have additional difficulties from learning two or more languages. English learners with a language impairment can and do become bilingual and biliterate. True or false? Language varies depending on the subject area being taught. Hands up if we think it's true. I guess I kind of clued you in a little bit earlier. Hmm. Whoops, I didn't think about that. Hmm. All right, many people think this is true. Looks like a, a lot of the um, district, the, the groups, have come to maybe consensus over there and in, in conferring independent of our large group and think it's true. All right. True. Different academic subjects tend to use specific vocabulary or sentence patterns. Many educators have heard about, quote, the language of math or the, quote, language of science. This refers to the idea that different academic subjects tend to use specific vocabulary or sentence patterns and that these must be actively learned by students, particularly if they're English learners. For example, science assignments might require the ability to make predictions supported by evidence using sentence frames like, I predict x because y. Or math might require knowing the difference between a, quote, table that organizes data and a, quote, table that is a piece of furniture. Fortunately, there are now a variety of strategies available for teachers in many different content areas to scaffold the language demands of their academic materials. Um, and, you know, part of what's tricky here is the language demands, we, we sometimes call them embedded. Um, so we, they don't, they're not quite explicit. You have to sort of um, understand that they're there. Um, one of the things that we've been talking a lot about is teachers as educational linguists. So it's being able to recognize some of those embedded demands, those, those implicit um, hidden meanings and, and other uh, linguistic issues. True or false? Code switching, switching between two languages during a conversation, reflects confusion and inability of children with disabilities to keep the two language se languages separate. Therefore, it's a sign or a cause of language impairment in ELF. Who thinks this is true? All right. I presume everyone thinks that is false. Well, we're very we're very well informed party here. Code switching is a normal grammatical and effective behavior in all English learners, including those with disabilities. It is not associated with language impairment and is equally present in typically developing English learners and speakers of more than one language. Code switching is neither a sign nor a cause of language impairment. Um, so our colleagues, um, um, someone who was on the CALS board, Ophelia Garcia and others, have done a lot of work and is sort of trending in the field, this notion around translanguaging, um, this idea that, um, that languages are not, do not exist independent of one another um, among multilingual um, and multiliterate speakers. So um, fortunately, there's been some, some shift, and I think it's fairly wide, known fairly widespread um, that bilingualism and code, code switching is a na natural part of bilingualism. Um, and um, we can make the argument that, in fact, it demonstrates um, a more sophisticated levels of proficiency. Um, if, if we're working with younger kids, um, you might consider using, for example, children's books that involve um, code switching. Skippy John Jones, for example, I was reading with my son last night, um, has code switching um, in, it, in it between English and Spanish.